This is Tucrium fruticans azurea, and um, germander is the common name. Uh, you'll see in the photograph that this becomes kind of a striking rounded form if it's left alone. And um, what you're seeing now, this is September 1st near the coast, you can see these great uh, blue flowers, blue lavender flowers against this gray foliage. It's a really striking combo. Unfortunately, uh, they don't really occur in a big profusion in a way that it, you can see, uh, see it as well as you would like. You see how when you look at this mass of foliage, the color doesn't really jump out at you. And that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. Um, that said, it's still a nice uh, kind of treat during the winter, I find. I'm in an inland valley where it's cold, and in the winter uh, we get these uh, blooming um, kind of February, March. Uh, this is a coastal area, so they're on a different cycle apparently, but um, nonetheless, um, they're kind of a nice treat when they show up, but they won't knock you over with the intensity of their bloom. Um, these are very uh, easy care plants. What you're going to see in the other video that's combined with this is the fact that um, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to use this in a tight area where it can't uh, get to its usual shape and size and because of that it ends up all cut up and that's just the wrong way to use this. If you're going to use it in a design, try and give it a minimum of four to five foot diameter and height um, and then you won't have to hack away at it to try and turn it into something it doesn't want to be. So. Um, I'll talk more about that in the rest of the video, but um, it's a very low water plant once it's established. Even in hot inland va valleys, it can tolerate low water, and the deer do leave this alone. This is pretty reliable in deer areas, so give that a try. I think these small gray leaves uh, make it quite drought tolerant, and it doesn't lose a lot of water to transpiration because of the, s the tighter leaf, so it's pretty good on the water front. And, um, you know, again, I, I'm not a big uh, fan of overdoing gray. Gray can start making a garden design look kind of washed out and arid. And if you're going for that look, fine, you can use it that way. But uh, be careful if you're not going for that look about using too much of this because it can really suck the energy out of your greens and your other colors when you get carried away with gray foliage. And this is a bigger plant, so it can certainly cause that issue. And uh, that's what I can tell you about Tucrium fruticans, Azurea. And here's the Tucrium fruticans where they're allowing it to grow out. You're starting to see what the foliage can really look like. I'll, uh, I'll include a picture of what the mature plant should look like, but this is more of the true color and texture of the foliage. You can see here it's got a nice gray-green um, foliage color, so it's really nice if you use it in the right application. Um, and I'll show you a photo, as I said, of the true shape of the plant. This one's been sheared into a bit of a hedge, but um, it's really not a plant that likes confinement, so I'd say this isn't the best application um, where you're trying to keep it too narrow. They're trying to keep this about three feet wide and it really wants to be more like five or six feet wide like that chunk down there.